Should the Giants move on from Daniel Jones? Again, I'll let you sit on that. I'll let you sit on that for just a second. Think about it. Get angry about it. Get pissed off. Call us an idiot. Now go to the comment section and tell us what you think. Should the Giants move on from Daniel Jones? Is it too early? Tell us what you think and give us a like while you're down there. Uh, let's just start this off with the obvious. Yes, it's a little early to make that determination. It's three games into the first year after he just got his big contract. But the reason I bring this up, and wanted, I thought this would be a good discussion for us to do, is so far it's been off to a rocky start. Um, and now that Saquon's missed last game, and he might miss a couple more, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. So just to throw a couple, a little bit of uh, numbers at you guys real fast here. Uh, his completion percentage is down so far this year. Last year, I think it was like 68%. It's now at 64, I believe. Um, he's thrown almost as many interceptions this year as he did last year. He's at four now. He threw five last year. His quarterback rating is the lowest of his career at 70%. His QBR is the second lowest of his career at 46. His sack percentage is the highest of his career at 11%. It, the long and short of it is it has just looked awful out there. At one point, they were down 0, 0 to 28 against the Cardinals. You know, thankfully, they were able to come back that game. And Brian Nabel apparently took back play calling duties. But it has not looked good. B, what do you think? Is it too early to say this? What, what's your What are your thoughts on this so far? Yeah, I think it's too early. Um, but I'm still in the camp that like you can win with a Daniel Jones. Like I don't think they should move on from him. Um, now, like if he's has like the worst season ever, maybe. But like I think they knew who he was when they offered him that ex- extension. Like he's a guy you can you can win with. Like he's a fringe like top 15 guy right now, right? Or it could be when he's performing well. Um, and they also got to look at what's around him, right? Sure, sure they have they had Barkley. He ended up right, whatever. Sure, they signed um, Waller in the offseason. Okay, that's cool. But his receivers, like, he has Darius Slayton, which is okay, I guess. Isaiah Hod- Hodgins, uh, Paris Campbell slash Sterling Shepard in these slots. I mean, like, he's not really – doesn't have a whole – a lot of playmakers around him right now, too. Like, compared to the other teams in that division, I, you would say his supporting cast is pretty, pretty like, underwhelming, in my own opinion, outside of Barkley. Um, I think, just looking forward, it might be, again, like, this conversation might be a little bit too early, but they have to put more playmakers around him. And then, just kind of bolster him up that way. He's not a guy, I don't think you can, he won't win you ball games, but you can win with him. But that's that's just my take. What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just kind of getting a little tired of that excuse, to be honest. I mean, I, I know we talk about you know, the receivers and everything like that. And I'm not sitting here going to say, and, well, he has great, great weapons around him. But he does have Saquon. Saquon's great. He's a top five back. I mean, it's just he is what it is. That is what it is. He is hurt right now. And we see what Daniel Jones is without him. You do have Darren Waller, who at one point was considered top three tight end. I don't know where he falls in the rankings now, but he still is a really good tight end. Darius Slayton is good. He's not great. He's not spectacular. He's not a number one. But he's okay. He gets you 800 yards a season. Uh, Paris Campbell is kind of a bounce around guy at this point. Um, Isaiah Hodges is, I think, is one of their homegrown kind of guys. I think he's 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 all right. He's not he's not again. He's not great. He's, he'd be a good wide receiver three or wide receiver four for somebody. Uh, just like Slayton is probably a good number two. But again, my point, I think my problem is still a matter of you're paying him $40 million, right? It's okay to not be the main reason for wins when you're making a rookie deal. But when you're making $40 million, you kind of need to be a, a, in the equation of wins. And so far, he's one and two. Saquon's missed, missed last week, and I think it was the worst they probably looked all season. They, they've got seven points. Again, against a vaulted 49ers defense. Let's not, let's add the full context here. It's, it's a great defense. And the only reason they got the seven though, is because of a great punt return that had him starting, I think about the 50, you know, I think the, the biggest thing for me so far is the numbers are all down. If the numbers were about what they were last year, kind of hovering, I could then go, okay, maybe he just needs an extra weapon or two to really like maximize and hit the next level and stuff. But at this point, his numbers are all at career worsts. So, but again, sorry, context were three games in. This could look like a really ridiculous thing, you know, week four, or I'm sorry, you know, four or five weeks when he he gets back to the media. But if he does not bounce back from this, 
if these numbers hold true the rest of the year, that's not that's not a good sign that he regressed that much. Um, and I think part of it, what you said is, you know, they know what they he knew, they knew what he was when they signed him. I mean, they're paying they're paying him forty million a year. He didn't get top quarterback dollars when he when he signed. I mean, he got kind of like middle around the pack, Jimmy G, Ryan Tannehill kind of money. So, I mean, he at least needs to perform at that level. He's not like, so far this season. He has not again. That can change, and this can look silly. But they also did build an out into his deal. After the 2025 season, uh, they can release him with only a $22 million cap hit, which is not, I'm sorry, dead cap hit, which really isn't a lot of money when you, you start looking at the grand scheme of the whole, you know, whole salary cap and that they can easily, feasibly take it on. So if he does not, if he does not, and that's the only way the situation plays out, improve, get back to what he was last year where he was a, you know, top 15 quarterback. What do, what do the Giants do from here if he does not improve? If it were in my opinion about it, if he doesn't improve, I don't think you wait till after the 2025 draft or 2025 season to figure it out. I'm sorry, I'm saying this wrong. 2024 season. So he has this year, next year, then there's an out. So he could not be the quarterback of the Jets in 2025. Um, if I were, again, if I'm the Giants, I'm not waiting that long to figure out what's going on with this. If he doesn't, clean up by the end of the year. And these, again, these numbers hold about true. I wouldn't wait till the 2025 draft to find a quarterback either. I would look at the 2024 draft because that draft class quarterback draft class looks like it's going to be much better than the 2025, which should potentially have Shador Sanders going number one. And then who's after him. So I would take like a Bo Nix. I'd use a first round pick on a Bo Nix and have him sit that first year and then take over for Daniel Jones going to 2025. What do you think if 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 he doesn't improve? What do you think they should do? Should they keep writing it out with him? Should they look in a different direction? I mean, the best time to draft quarterback is when you don't really need one yet. So I'm definitely in agreement. Like they should take a pick, um, draft a QB this year uh, or this upcoming draft in 2024 draft. Um, I don't know if I agree with taking a first round guy though. I mean, that'd be pretty heavy. I mean, if they're really banking on again, like. I guess it's all all in context, but he looks bad, right? Yeah. I think they I think they should take one in general, some point throughout the draft, regardless if it's Absolutely. good or, or bad, just just to prepare yourself. Exactly. Um, but if, he, if, he, right. if, they, if they know by years end, like, oh, this thing's going south, we need to invest in a future quarterback, we need a first round pick. And yeah, yeah, go go ahead, take one. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely in agreement with that. They just they should take a pick, and then I'm curious to see how we finish out this season. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I, I still think he probably gets to that like median. Um this is a slow, slow start. See what see what happens. Uh wait till Barkley comes comes back. And I'm still in the camp, like I think they need to get him a true wide receiver one. I know they have Waller and Barkley, but I'm still looking at this receiver list. I'm like, I'm not that impressed with it. But to yeah. your point, he he needs he needs to play better. He needs to do stuff within his control. He had a couple of errant passes about the past three games. So there's stuff that he can he can work on him, him himself, but yeah, I mean, if he looks awful, yeah, go ahead, take a first round pick next year. Take take the quarterback first round. Um, regardless, though, I think they still have to draft someone, yeah. and then just 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 be prepared. Like, what if he looks bad next year? You have that out of twenty twenty five. Well, at least you have someone to sit for maybe one or two years, right? And who can step in and play and start in twenty twenty five? Yeah. So, kind of further to your point as well about that. You know, I know we if if he gets back to the medium this year. If I'm the Giants, and I know we had a video about this where we broke down Sam Hartman's tape, and we had him as a third, potentially fourth round quarterback. We don't think he's going to test well athletically, but his brain processing power is fantastic. He kind of fits the mold of what the Giants like at quarterback. So, I mean, either way, if he gets back to medium, if I were the Giants, I would draft him in the third or fourth. And then if Daniel Jones looks bad in 2024, just turn to Sam Hartman and then get rid of Daniel Jones in the offseason. Or Daniel Jones returns to the meeting, he looks like a good quarterback. Then you just have a, you know, probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL in Sam Hartman. If he looks atrocious this year, I would then go, I would then, you have to go with an aggressive move. Because if you go with a limbo move, if you go with like, you know, say you don't get Sam Hartman, you got to get somebody else, right? The odds of that person panning out are slim. And now you're just stuck in quarterback limbo for the next two or three years. And then you lose Brian Dable because you fired him. And I just think it's a, a messy situation quickly. So yeah, I'd take an aggressive swing and take like a Bo Nix at the end of the first round 
um, and see if you can't develop him. You know, because then you get to keep the athleticism at quarterback with maybe a little bit better ball accuracy um, and see and see where it goes with that. See what see what Brian Dable can turn that into. I, I, like, I like that plan. I like that plan. Um, is there any better quarterbacks out there who you would pursue if you were a Giants GM? I said, like, obviously, I still think you need a draft quarterback, right? But what if they do like a, a bridge player at QB? Like, let's say this cut ties with Dan Jones competing, right? They're like, oh, we're just done with you. Oof, that'd like, be a sooner team. rather like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, they yeah. just get like a bridge player and then like that guy sit for a season. Yeah, that'd be a big cap it. Um, if they yeah, did be, do that, who would they, who would they even? Do you do you know? Do you have like the numbers? Well, will be the cap it. They were to cut them before twenty twenty five season. Let me I, uh, let me get it real quick pulled back up here. So, and again, we're, this is more of like an extreme case, guys. Like if you're a Giants fan watching this, we don't think it's going to happen. But yeah, we're just trying again, to pull out all like yeah. All if you're if you're a Giants fan, please remember at the beginning of the video we said it would be preemptive to do this. It's preemptive to pull this this conclusion. It's just that so far it hasn't looked good, but it can get turned around. But so far it hasn't, and it's always good to build in contingency plans just in case it doesn't. It's better to protect yourself so you're not like floundering around for three or four years versus you know so you have an, an idea of what you want to do there. Uh, that was a weird way of saying that. I apologize. So if they cut him after this year, like he looks really bad, is that what you mean? Yeah. So if they cut him after this year, it's an eighty-one million dollar cap hit. If they cut him after uh, next season, that goes down to 69. I'm sorry. So they cut him going into the 2020. So post June 1st, if they cut him, it's a $22 million cap. Yeah. So they're definitely not, they're not getting rid of him until 2025. <laughs> yeah. So potential out in 2025 with yeah, two years. So that'd be this year. Well, even that's what we talked about. They'd play out the rest of this year. He'd play out next year with like Bo Nix behind him. And then going into 2025, they release him, and it's only a 22.2 million dollar cap hit. So, either that's what I'm saying. Either way, you have to play him this year, and you kind of have to play him next year. So, if you're going to draft a quarterback, it would be good to take a guy with like a high upside, because he, you know, or like a guy that just needs to like sit a year, like learn to play what kind of stuff. Because then you you yeah. have to play, you have to kind of have to at 69 million, you have to pay play Daniel Jones in 2024 as well. And then 2025 would be when it's the rookie, you know, the new guy's time to shine. So, yeah. Yeah. But giant, giant fans, again, don't worry. I would not be worrying right now about you. The no. offense will get back in track. We're not saying it's going to happen. So, yeah. This is fine. It's good. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's just an idea. And to be honest with you, I'm sure the New York Giants front office is doing the same thing that we're doing. They're looking at it, they're building a contingency plans, they're coming up with a bunch of different strategies just in case you know, this whole thing goes south, you know, because it, yeah. maybe it was just contract year. You know, how many times we've we seen that contract year for a guy, they ball out, get the new new deal. And then they take, you know, all of a sudden start sucking again. So yeah. it's always good which, to just have those contingency plans thought out. Which they already have, like they already built that into the, the contract. With right. The, with the they have a two year out. So they already yeah. are like prepared for this scenario. Yeah. That's why they, they paid all, they're paying a lot of the money up front. So in the back end, they can get out of it. If it's like, Hey, this didn't work out. So, but yeah, tell That's us smart. what you guys think. Is it too early? Would you move on from Daniel Jones? And, you know, for, just for fun, Giants fans, just for fun, comment and tell us who you think the Giants should draft and who they would replace with. But uh, I think that pretty much is good for us for this one. Um, again, it's always fun talking with you guys. It's always fun talking with you as well, B. Um, Same, man. Don't forget to give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. We're on Spotify. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We make a bunch of fun videos all the time. We're constantly commenting on Twitter, so you can go join with us and talk to us there as well. Uh, but until next time, it's been Emmett. It's been B. This is the RFL Show.